Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the Expressway servers and talk about bandwidth restrictions. Now bandwidth restrictions on the Expressway are similar to regions and locations on the CCM. Essentially you're allocating bandwidth on both a per call and total bandwidth basis. And if you'd like to brush up on regions and locations on the CUCM before or after this video, I already have a video on this topic that you can check out. Uh, look at the link in the upper right hand corner or check down in the description. Now on the expressway, there are two ways that you can configure bandwidth restrictions. You can use something called pipes or you can use subzones. Today we're going to focus entirely on controlling bandwidth with subzones and in the next video, we'll focus on controlling bandwidth with pipes. Now remember, these are the default components that we have out of the box with an Expressway server. We have our default subzone, default zone, and our traversal subzone, and of course the default links between them. Now when you're doing bandwidth restrictions with subzones, you need to consider a few things. So for the traversal subzone, we know from a previous video that no endpoints can ever register to a traversal subzone, right? So this means that when you go into the bandwidth restrictions for the traversal subzone, you're only going to see the bandwidth restrictions as total and per call. Okay, but you're going to see something a little different for subzones that endpoints can register to. Okay, so for example, for the default subzone, and uh, if, for example, you created an additional subzone, say subzone 1, the endpoints can register there. So you're going to have a total bandwidth just as before, but now the per call bandwidth is going to be further divided into two additional forms of bandwidth restriction. You can do a per call in out restriction and a per call within restriction. So what is per call within? Per call within means, uh, let's say for example, I have two endpoints that are registered to the same subzone. Let's say the default subzone here, and uh, let's say they place a call between each other. This call is entirely within that subzone, so the within bandwidth will apply to this call here. But in out means that I have an endpoint registered uh, maybe to the default subzone and then an endpoint registered maybe to subzone one down here. And when those two endpoints are in a call, because they're in two different subzones, then they're going to use the in out per call bandwidth restrictions. Now in out would also be used for two endpoints in the same subzone, but using different protocols. So for example, if this endpoint in the default subzone was using H323 and the other one was using SIP, it would also use in out. Okay, so even though the two endpoints are in the same subzone, it's a traversal call. So the call has to go out of the default subzone to the traversal zone and then back in. Okay, let's look at one more example because one thing you have to keep in mind when you're thinking about this and configuring your settings is not just where the endpoints are registered, but what the media path is going to be when they make a call. So let's say we've created an additional subzone, let's say uh, subzone 2 down here, and then we've got an endpoint registered to subzone 1 and an endpoint registered to subzone 2. And in this case, we know that we need to look in the in-out bandwidth restrictions for subzone 1 and 2, since this is where our endpoints are registered, but we also need to consider the media path. To make a call between these endpoints, we have to go through the default subzone. So we'll have to consider the in-out restrictions for the default subzone as well. Now, configuring bandwidth restrictions on subzones is really simple. Uh, once you're logged into your Expressway, you'll go to Configuration, then Local Zone, and then here you'll select whatever one you want to configure. It could be the default subzone or maybe additional subzones that you've created. So let's go ahead and look at the default subzone since this is where our endpoints are going to register by default. Okay, so up at the top we've got Policy. We've already gone over that, and then there's SIP here. And then these last three sections are all related to bandwidth categories that we talked about. So this first one here is the total bandwidth, of course, and uh, then you have calls into or out of the default subzone, our in-out, and then at the bottom is the bandwidth for calls that are entirely within the default subzone. In this case, it's the default subzone. And so these are our within bandwidth restrictions. Now, this is what you'll see 
on the default subzone or any other subzone that you might create because remember you can register an endpoint to these subzones. However, remember for the traversal subzone where you can't register an endpoint, these last two categories are really going to just be one category. Uh, in fact, let me just go ahead and show you real quick. We'll go to configuration, local zone, and then traversal subzone. And you can see we have total bandwidth and calls handled by the traversal subzone. Okay, just these two. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Let's go back to the default subzone. Okay, so all you have to do to configure these is, uh, let's start with total bandwidth. All you have to do is uh, change this from unlimited to limited. And then here's where you'll specify what that limitation is. So this is expressed in kilobits per second. So if we wanted to make this, uh, I don't know, five meg, we'd need to put 5,120, okay? That's total bandwidth, okay? Now down here for the in and out, we'll change that to limited. And then if I wanted to limit this to say one meg, I'd put in uh, 1024 here. So that's only for calls going in and out. But then uh, let's say I want for all calls that are taking place only within the default subzone to get a full two meg, I'd put in uh, 2048 here. So there might be a little uh, calculation necessary on your part for this, but one thing that's really nice about bandwidth restrictions on the expressway is that you don't have to calculate overhead. On the CCM, if you remember, you have to calculate overhead when you're implementing bandwidth restrictions, but that's not the case here. So once you've got your bandwidth allocated here, just uh, click save down here at the bottom and you're all set. Okay, next is bandwidth restrictions with pipes, a completely different approach, but basically accomplishes the same thing. We'll tackle that in the next one. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.